Okay, so I've got a flying lesson planned for 9am on Friday morning. That's tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm looking at the weather at the moment just to try and plan uh, whether that lesson's going to go ahead and what conditions look like uh, out there and what they're probably going to look like as we get into Friday morning. So um, this is the analysis chart from this afternoon, Boxing Day afternoon. You see these fronts here that are across the country. They're moving their way northeastwards uh, through the UK and basically when you see fronts like that you're just thinking cloud and rain and that's exactly what we see quite interesting to see the the origination of the flow that we've got at the moment is down here well past the azores that tells us that it's tropical maritime flow it's going to be very moist it's going to have lots of cloud in it and it's going to have lots of uh, rain and drizzle too. Interestingly though, the pressure itself is actually fairly high. We've got high pressure presented over Spain and uh, down here is where we've got 1,020 millibars and above. And so uh, by tomorrow morning, the forecast chart for tomorrow morning for 6 a.m., it's absolutely no surprise to see that the front is weakening. Um, it's still across Wales. It's getting into western parts of the Midlands. I'm flying from Hankley Green, so just in here. Uh, but the front is weakening. The pressure through it is quite high, so that means that we're getting descending air coming through the front, and that's further weakening the front as well. So going through my head at the moment, I've got two things. Um, one is that we've got a very moist southwesterly flow, which will be bringing cloud. It'll be bringing drizzle as well. We're in a warm sector because we're high behind that warm front. The other thing going through my mind, though, is that we've got relatively high pressure. So could that aid the breakup of the front? The problem is that because of the time of year, the likelihood of that front breaking up is much diminished because of the amount of moisture that we may well have in the air mass itself. So one of the ways that we can have an idea about what's going on is to look at the UK update and outlook. This is the AMEX for Friday. And that highlights here, it's telling me in here, that um, in the warm sector zone, which will be behind that warm front, we've got broken cumulus, stratocumulus, and isolated broken stratus. We've got some mist, we've got some hill fog as well. And um, that kind of hints that there is a lot of low cloud around. I'm thinking this is going to be one of those days where things drift in and out. Now, remember, this isn't the actual weather um, forecast for the flight. This is me planning ahead to think, well, is this flight actually going to go ahead on a Friday morning? So let's get on to the skew T. This is the forecast skew T diagram for nine o'clock on Friday morning. And uh, what the skew T is showing us is this classic signal here of high pressure of an anti-cyclone in middle parts of the atmosphere, but it's down here that interests us because if you look at that, it is quite damp. Uh, that bottom part of the skew T diagram, can I zoom in on that for you? Down here, look, this is showing a fair amount of low cloud. And by 12 o'clock, it actually shows more cloud coming in. So I have to say, I'm not exactly that hopeful that um, I'm going to be flying at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, these skew tees really do open uh, the door to understanding what's going on with the weather and give us a real insight into conditions. I've got a, an online skew tee course at my uh, weatherschool.co.uk site. If you come to weatherschool.co.uk, just come down to online here, a pilot's guide to skew tee diagrams. It fully explains how you can understand these diagrams. It's a three hour course. Uh, it's got lots of different modules in them. You can see them just down there. And uh, what it does, it enables you to understand these skew tee diagrams. And that's really what I'm using to be able to make these predictions. So I'm not exactly hopeful, but what I am going to do is go along to the school um, because I think that's what you've got to do when you're learning to fly. It's kind of get into the environment, get your brain working in that environment, and hopefully uh, we can do some ground school. Air law is wonderful, isn't it? Uh, I'm just reading through that now. So hopefully we can do uh, some ground school, even if we can't go flying tomorrow from Hapney Green. Um, but I hope that you can get flying. Um, I hope it's a better... Uh, afternoon for you if you're going later. Uh, this is how the afternoon looks with that front having uh, moved its way eastwards so uh, things do look better. Now if you'd like to get a better understanding of the weather completely uh, then come along to my uh, weather school courses. My aviation weather uh, part one has just one place available on the next course with places available on Thursday the 5th of March. All of the other courses are completely full but if you can make it on that Thursday course it would be great to see you there and basically what I want to do is build your confidence in your own ability to be able to make these forecasts yourselves 
basically do uh, what I'm doing, being able to plan up to four or five days ahead. You get more information here at weatherschool.co.uk. Just click on Aviation Weather School Part 1 and all the information you need is there. And all you do is just click on the link here, book securely by card or PayPal, and that will allow you to book there. Okay, I will uh, leave you with that for now, I think. But I just wanted to show you uh, what I'm looking at when I plan, uh, particularly uh, now that I'm back in the hot seat and learning to fly. Okay, thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.